Oh, what's up? What's up? So, here we are building up Larry Lightweight, and uh, I come across a problem with the clutch. For some reason, this clutch arm is far more forward on this bike than it is on my other bike. And what that means is I had to make a massive adjustment on the cable. And that's not right. So, uh, we need to bear in mind that I originally got hold of this engine because the gearbox had exploded. And I never really found a concrete bit of proof as to why the gearbox exploded. So, rather than just start it up and wait for it to go bang, we need to do a little bit of investigative work and try and see if we can find a reason as for what's going on. So basically now, I have got to remove everything that I bolted on yesterday. Now that's pretty boring, so uh, I'll get back to you when that lot has been done. All right, I'm going for the speed version. I'm a bit lazy. I've only dropped the spring off the brake pedal. See if we can get around that. That's the cable off. Oops, let's just drop that back there. All right, bolts out. So I'm also doing the, uh, the water pump seal because this engine has got 149,000 kilometers on it so uh, we do a little bit of preventative work while we're in here right so with all the bolts out if you rotate the clutch arm sometimes it will just ping off in front of it but not this time so what we'll do is we'll very carefully there's a pry point there there's a not easy to reach one in there so we'll go for the not easy to reach one and we'll just give that a touch there all right let's just touch that one there it does feel like it's ready to fall off without much effort at all so here we go now right so uh Dust the cover back off. Now I'll just pull the arm out. Right now, what's actually happening is this clutch arm it goes in there like that. Look, and as it rotates around, it pulls the clutch cover out. That's what disengages your clutch. Now, for some reason. My arm, it's a bit hard to see because we're looking parallel with it instead of down on the top of it. Let's go like that. Right, now, instead of my arm being back there like it is on the 250, my arm is right over here. Which means I haven't got any uh, clutch adjustment. So what I need to check first is where are you? It's probably going to go out of focus now, but there's a wear point there, look, where it drags that release puck or whatever you want to call it it drags that out now the question is if that's excessively worn it will make my arm travel too far hmm the next thing I was thinking is originally if you watched all my old videos <laughs> this is where it pays off if you'd watched the old ones you would have seen that um the bearing in the back of there blew out the end of the gearbox and blew the casing up i had to get the casing welded up so what i was thinking now is i didn't take any measurements i didn't have any to take what i was thinking was uh, if they welded the back of that gearbox but brought the bearing too far this way it means that the whole clutch would have been too far this way which means that the arm would come around too far. That all kind of makes sense. So in a dream at five o'clock this morning, when I dreamt about that happening, I thought, well, yeah, the obvious way to spot that, if there wasn't any backwards and forwards play, which there isn't, would be that your main drive gear from the crankshaft to the clutch basket, it would be over here and it wouldn't be meshing with each other. So I'm looking in there now and it does look to be completely in mesh and not sort of hanging out this side so that's a good thing 
So going back to this again. With its 150,000 kilometers. That doesn't spin very nice actually. That's that bearing was alright when it went in, but it's not spinning at all nice now, so uh, I'm going to take the cover off and have a look inside there. I'll just uh, do that lot while you go and put the kettle back on. Right, this next bit's going to be fun to film. Because uh, I can't... Whoa! I can't get the thing to focus, but... Uh, that's no good, is it? Mm -hmm. Right, just talk amongst yourselves while I try and get the camera to focus on what I'm doing. So basically, this is the opposite of a push rod. This is like a pull rod. Fits in there like that. The clutch, are we gonna focus today? The clutch arm comes this way and pulls the rod that way. Like that. Everything else seems to check out all right. Apart from this pull rod, doesn't fit. Was oh, that focus? That's focus there. Look at that! Amazing. Oh, drop it on the floor, and then the focus was gone. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Samsung. You are fantastic. Right now, you can kind of see how that pulls your clutch in and out to release it. Really happy days we can see. So, see the two shiny bits in there? The only thing I can think of is they are excessively worn. So, um, that's the parts are quite cheap here. I think it's time we invested in a few more parts for this engine. Now, any time today when we want to focus, that fits all right in there, but the shaft is spinning a lot freer than the bearings actually spinning. Obviously, when it's got tension on it and it's being pulled, it's going to bind it together more. But it's spinning too freely. So I'm going to go and focus. Look at it. Look. look. I might as well draw a piece. I'll draw it on a piece of paper and put it down there on the floor. You'll be able to see it then. Hey, right, I'm going to go and check the service manual now to see if I can get any kind of measurements off of this, but I don't really think there will be because it's too insignificant in a big scheme of things, but uh, I will have a go. Um, it looks like I've got to order more parts from Sang Chai. They're going to get bored shitless with me. So, that's actually a 3001 bearing, which is the same as the bearings I need for the water pump, and Sang Chai's don't have any stock. So I now need three 6001 bearings and another cup of coffee. Right, I guess that wraps this up. Later.